Hello, everyone. This is Cynthia, and we are discussing prayer. Let me go ahead and get myself situated here as we get started this morning. Share my screen, get my drink, and um, we'll go from there. Give me just a moment here. What's going on? Okay, how is everyone? We're going to start this morning and I have picked, you'll have to excuse me, you can see I'm a little red today, I'm a little overheated. I picked this slide at the very beginning because I wanted to make a statement. This morning, our topic, we're gonna to be talking about light. We're gonna be talking about the lightning of God. We're gonna be talking about his power. I think it's very appropriate today. And so um, I want to just have you think for a few moments, and we're going to run through quite a few bit of scriptures. Um, I'm not going to stop and read them. I'm going to give you the actual address of them on my slides. Those of you who are on my email uh, list will get a list of these scriptures so that you can go through those if you choose to. I think it's important that we always go back and look up the scriptures so that we can, we can um, uh, soak in more of what we've heard. So today I want to talk about the lightning of God. And I'm going to use the scripture here in Job. I don't know if you've, he you've heard a lot of people talk about the book of Job. Not one of my favorite books, but it is, it is a book that uh, we can find certain things in um, when we're looking to hear what God has to say. And in Job, John, Job, excuse me, Job 36, 32, reading out of the NIV, we see the scripture says, he fills his hands with lightning and commands it to strike its mark. Think about the imagery of what we're saying when we say that God himself fills his hands with lightning and commands it to strike its mark. That's really powerful. And so I'm going to be going through some scriptures. See, scripture associates God with light or lightning. And these scriptures that I have listed, there are seven of them. And they associate God with light or lightning. Next scriptures I want to show you are four scriptures that associate his light or the release of it. Talks about what happens when the release of his light. Think about the scriptures that we know when um, God's light was released. Um, sometimes his glory is, is described as light. Think about when Moses came down uh, from meeting with him at the bush and his face shone. Think about when he came down from the mountain and the people couldn't look upon his face because it was so bright. Think about when angels showed up uh, in the Old Testament or the New Testament, many times they were, they were surrounded by light. And, and um, these scriptures give us a definition or a, a glimpse of the power and of the radiance of who, who God is himself. Scriptures here, these um, nine scriptures are associated with light, lightning, or glory, the glory of God that's released from his mouth. You know, we have scripture in Revelation that says um, that out of his mouth comes, right, lightning and flashes, and the word of God comes out of his mouth. And we know that our picture of armor, we have the sword, which is the word of God. And so there's this picture that God is painting throughout scripture of the power of an imagery of him as light, as lightning, his glory, his power. We talk about, and we'll, we'll I want to make sure I don't get ahead of myself, here we have scriptures that um, God is light in relationship to him and dealing with his enemies. And there's five scriptures here. Actually, I said there's five, but there's actually, yeah, there's five. I was going to say there's six. There's five scriptures here that associate that light of God in regarding um, to his enemies. So you can look up those scriptures. Those are kind of interesting. And then also I want to tell you that there are four scriptures that associate God's light in the context of deliverance. 
And so we see that God's light shows up is lightning. It shows up as his glory. It shows up, shows um, lightning even, or his power coming forth with lightning itself. It comes forth to deliver people. It comes forth to bring messages. It does all kinds of things. So according to the scriptures that I've listed and probably many others, God is light. We know that that's even a definition of who God is. See, we are giving a powerful, we're given a powerful imagery at times, his glory, his strength, his power, it flashes from him as bolts of lightning. I want to talk about one more scripture. In Luke 10, 17 through 19, we see the 72 returned with joy and said to the Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. They're talking about the power that comes with the name of Jesus and the spirit of God when, it's, when that spirit is resting upon us. And he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to cover, overcome all all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. That's of course in Luke 10, 17 through 19 NIV. So the imagery that I'm trying to portray or that I'm hoping that your understanding is the power that comes from the light and the lightning and the word of God that comes from his, from um, his mouth. I think he has to restrain himself you know scripture also tells us that if we saw man if god if man saw god we would die and i want to kind of relate that to kind of a strange funny little story have you ever seen the um the scripture or not the scripture the movie the bug's life oh i love that movie when i go to disney we always have to go um to the tree and watch the bug's life movie so i have thought about that quite often and if you've ever watched the movie there's these bu bugs right and they're going into the big city which is a pile of garbage and as they get there above this city is a bug zapper you know one of those lights that attracts the bugs and when they go up there it's like zzz, they're done and i have just always uh loved that because there's this little bug saying there's they, they're warning all of them as they come into town don't look at the light don't look at the light don't look at the light and this little bug, he's like, he looks at the light and he's so drawn in and he's like, it's so beautiful. And then, you know, you see the little poof of, of power that comes out and, and it uh, destroys the bug. Now you're like, oh, Cynthia, that's really, that's kind of strange. Why would you tell us that picture? I think it's a little backwards, but it kind of fits. You know, some of us think of God like that bug zapper. That if we look at him, if we're not quite right, he's going to zap us with his power and we're going to just explode into nothingness, right? Like he's the big fly swatter God in the sky. He's looking for a reason to snap us or zap us. But you know, God's really what I see in the scripture is not that. So I, I, that was just a funny a story that I always think of when I think of light. It's so beautiful, but God, God is so beautiful. Yes. But when we go into him, we're not zapped and, and disposed of like the bug. But what I want to say about that is that bug killer or that zapper of light is really, if we were presented in, uh, before God in our own fleshly form, without the seal of God, without, without, um, his blood without uh, our flesh being dealt with, without our flesh b basically being dead when our we approach him in spirit. But if we approached him in flesh, I can imagine that our flesh would, this is my opinion now, this is my opinion, but think about it. Our flesh really can't stand in who the presence of who God is, in his holiness, in his mightiness, in his power, in his majesty, in his strength. And so I like to think about, or I, I think it's important that we don't minimize who God is, that we put him on a level that we can understand. Think about the power of lightning. Is anyone, can anyone harness the power of lightning? Well, wasn't it Ben Frank, Franklin who, who attempted to do that, to harness the power of lightning in electricity? And I'd read some statistics this week about the amount of voltage that comes through lightning. Uh, don't remember what they were, but I just remember that it was really big. And it, it, it's, there, it, it's beyond what we could handle as human beings. So what I, I want to just 
kind of change uh, thoughts here for a moment. And I want to talk about this light and darkness that we've kind of talked about throughout our whole discussion of prayer and intercession. So we have, when, when we're born, uh, physically born into the earth, we are born into darkness because of Adam and Eve's sin. And then when we become saved, when we um, invite the Lord into our life, we become that light within us is lit and we become alive in our spirit man. And so there's always this tug of war between the light and the darkness, right? They're always hitting against one another. Darkness is trying to move in and light is, is moving over. It's our job to announce the light and overtake the darkness. And I don't know if I can do this on this, this note. I can't do it. Um, I had this, um, the slide um, in which I could move the white over to overtake the darkness. And darkness never overtakes light. Light always overtakes darkness. Light is more powerful. And I think we need to remember that, is that the light that is within us is always more powerful than the darkness. And that when light shows up, the light of God who is within us, then we overtake the darkness. Darkness does not overtake us unless we allow it to. And I want to specifically talk about um, when we're saved, when we become born again, it lights us up from the inside. If we could see imagery of, let's suppose, a candle that is in within us that is never lit until we're saved, and then God comes along and he he lights that fire within us and we have a God consciousness in a way that we never had before. It's a place in which God can, uh, it's, it's an ownership, but it isn't until we're filled with the spirit at Pentecost, until we have our own personal Pentecostal experience, that we have the dunamis, the power to go out and do. Now, does the light overcome darkness? Absolutely, it does. Will the light get us into heaven? Absolutely, it will. Will the light save the world? I don't think so. When Jesus left the earth, he told the disciples to go into the upper room and to wait until the helper came, of which we know is the power of God. We also know, I want to make sure I don't get, get too far ahead, we also know that when the Holy Spirit came, everything changed. Now let's go back to this light and darkness. You know, the world recognizes light and darkness. They really do. They, you know, they have the yin and yang symbols. Um, I talked to a lady this last week in which I was invited to be on her, her radio show, her inter interview show, in which she is a... Um, uh, universalist, I guess, um, and she talks to talks about the universe, and she talks about positive and negative power, which we would know, we would probably classify as light and darkness. She talks about how neither one of them are bad; that you need the positive and you need the ne the negative to to um, get the energy you need to be propelled into the places that you're going. And that's her belief, and I'm not belittling her as a person because I believe that she's looking for truth, but the whole world has a concept of what is evil and what is, what is not, what is light, what is darkness. We don't have to convince people that there's darkness in the world. We may have to convince them what darkness is, but we do not have to convince them that there is evil or there is darkness in the world. And so it, the enemy has gotten involved also. I, I think it's important that we recognize that he attempts to present himself as an angel of light. You see, because the enemy cannot create, create anything, all he does is watches what God does, and then he makes a version of it, a, a version of whatever God has created and makes a version of it that's twisted or perverted. So it gives people an answer, but it's not the truth. Uh, like I said, with the yin and the yang and the black and the white and the vibrations and the universe that, that's going to guide them and, and, and uh, give them everything that they need if only they'll overcome and they'll get the right, right vibrations and the right energy behind them. See, I, what I, the reason why I'm talking about light and darkness and the light of God and the lightnings of God and the power of God, and then the idea of the light and the darkness is that we need to recognize that intercession itself is always going to include some form of warfare. 
When we think about the, the first heaven, that's the area in which we live. The second heaven, where in Daniel, that's where the warfare was taking place. And then the third heaven, which is the Holy of Holies, which is God's throne. When answers come from God's throne, sometimes they get caught up in that second heaven. Sometimes when we're offering up our prayer to God, it gets caught up in that second heaven and can't get through for reasons that we're not going to discuss today. But there are reasons that things get stopped up in that second heaven. There is always a form of some sort of warfare when we are in intercession for others and for situations. The enemy just doesn't say, well, isn't that lovely? They want to be blessed of God. I'm just going to let that happen. That does That is not how that works. See, at time, God simply releases himself and to, and himself and his glory into a situation as sometimes um, the scripture tells us in, in Psalms 97 5 that the mountains melt like wax before the Lord because of before the Lord of all the earth because of all his power when the mountains see him they just melt like wax and then um, scripture tells us in Hebrews 12, 29, that our God is a con consuming fire. So we need to remember that when God releases himself, releases his glory into a situation, think about it, light is introduced into darkness and the darkness has no choice. It has to go. Hear what I'm saying? When light is introduced into a dark place, it has no choice. It has to go. We, can, we, don't in, we don't introduce darkness into light. We introduce light into darkness. Darkness does not overcome light, but light overcomes darkness. Even if we use that scriptural principle, uh, that's the only one that we know. We have enough to warfare. We have enough to win. We have enough because Jesus, the light of the world, came into the world and, and won back, redeemed back the ownership of the earth light won over darkness. We can see that throughout scripture, story after story after story after story. So who can stand against our God? So you can say, Cynthia, again, what does all this have to do with prayer? And what does it have to do with intercession? Well, let me tell you. You see, we carry the presence of God. We carry that light. Like I said, when, when we're born again, it's like that candle is lit. It's never been alive. It's just been there, sitting there, but the fire of God comes and lights it within us. And then when we have our personal Pentecost or we're filled with the spirit of God, we now have that dunamis power. It's like that, that little flame becomes a blaze and God's glory comes and rests within us. And we have the opportunity to share out of that power. When we are filled with his spirit, his power, the power of God is within us. And if we've experienced that, we are now reflectors of who he is. We've talked about that. We're reflectors. We're representers. We are wielders of our sword in the spirit realm, right? What we say, the light of God comes out of our mouth. The word of God comes out of our mouth. We release his lightnings. We release his light into circumstances. We bring the light of God into, the circumstance, into circumstances. Now that sounds pretty physical. Let's go on and let me, let me see if I can, I can explain this further. So we have this light, right? Light of God is here. What can overcome this light? Darkness doesn't overcome this light. Light overcomes darkness. So here we have darkness and we have light in this place is what we're like before we're saved. And as I said, then we introduce, we introduce the, um, the concept of being filled with light. And we have this, this darkness and this light going on. And this may be my, my box. I might be able to, nope, I can't. Oh my. Well, it's really cool because I, I can move uh, when I'm not doing this. I can move my box back and forth. And now I've messed myself up. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. So this light and darkness is always, as I've already mentioned, at war with one another. And so as we're filled with the Spirit of God and we intercede, we become that go-between. We become, we, we create that paga. That meeting, we've talked about this at the very beginning when we, we were laying the foundation for prayer. 
we intercede. A word for intercession is the word paga, the Hebrew word paga. It means to meet. The more full definition of that word means to light upon, to fall with it, to fall in with it, to hit upon. The uh, scripture that we started with in Job 36, 32, I had it, had it bolded. It causes the meeting to strike its mark as an arrow hits its target to strike a mark. So when we go before God and we, we, we are asking God and we're creating a meeting so that power can fill, can meet upon, can fall upon, can strike, can hit upon, can strike a mark. Think of the power. When the Holy Spirit filled the, the um, apostles, or they were disciples, so we would call them disciples at that time, who ended up being the, the apostles. I guess it doesn't matter what we call them. But when the disciples were filled at Pentecost, think about it. The Holy Spirit hit, hit upon them. It lit upon them. It fell upon them. There was a meeting between Holy Spirit and the people on earth. And if we consider that, if we consider that, when there is a true meeting with heaven and with individuals, people, there is a change. Think about it. When the Pentecost occurred, it makes sense that fire, right? The, the, the flames of fire were seen above their heads. Think about it. If, if lightning hit you, if the light of God struck on you, the power of God hit you, you would exhibit the flame and the fire of God. So then what did they do? They prayed in the Holy Spirit, and then they spoke the word with power, with signs and wonders and miracles. They were, come on now, they were sent out to do what they were called to do, duplicate themselves and to announce the kingdom with signs, wonders, and miracles, to heal the sick, cast out demons, make disciples, to train them up and send them out and do it again. See, when lightning strikes, when prayer strikes, when we get in that position where we have created that meeting, here's God and here's the situation, here we are in the middle, right? And we are the conduit in between and we're creating that meeting. We're creating the situation for God to be able to release his, his power, his light into a situation. We stand, we pray, we stand in between as a representative of a person and a situation. We could say that we're a conduit for his answer or a conduit for him to release his light. We're giving him permission to move through us, through our words, to work in the earth today. You see, when we intercede, we enter into the presence of Father. Through Jesus, who's the doorway, right? Isn't that what the scripture tells us, that he's the, he's the door? There is no other door but him. We come in through, into his presence, into the throne room of God, into the courtroom of heaven with thanksgiving and praise. That's what scripture tells us, right? First, our hands are washed. We're clean. We, we've, we've known that we're, we have a meeting with the, with the judge of the universe. We know that we're going through going to meet the God of the universes. We're not going to just show up. We're going to make sure that we're clean. If I go to meet someone important, I, act, I wash my hair. I take a, a shower. I put on the best clothes that I have. I do the things that I can do to do the best I can with what I have to make the best instruction uh, impression to make sure they know that I, I honor them and think that this meeting is important. So as we wash ourselves and we become, and it's not about the clothes we wear, it's about the attitude of our hearts, about making sure that we're clean before him with no sin. We've washed our hands. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. We've done all that and we come walking into the throne room because the scripture tells us that we can approach the throne boldly with confidence because we know that scripture has told us and we have learned that whatever we ask he'll give us but we have to ask for what we need we have to ask for the answer we don't go up there to tell him his our, our problems he knows about our problems we come into the courtroom if you've ever been to court before you show up in the courtroom you go in and you pray to the judge that's the word they use the latin word is they're praying they're making intercession they're going before the judge and they use law precedence law that's already been established and says this is what the law says this person therefore should go free 
This person, therefore, should do this. This person, therefore, should happen. This should happen. This should happen. Because this is what the law says. This is what the word of God says. So we say, Father, I'm here. I'm representing whatever we're representing, whatever person we're representing, whatever situation we're representing. I'm here, Father, and I speak the answer of the word that he tells us and we apply the law. Father, your word says that by your stripes, on your on the backs of Jesus, this person is healed. We're here asking for that healing to be released. I'm not asking for permission. I'm not begging you to heal. You've already healed. I'm asking it for it to, to make the meeting, make it happen. I'm here reminding you of your word. I'm reminding you of the law that says that this person should be healed. I'm here saying, I'm here. Your word says that our, we, don't, we won't lack anything. And that's not what's happening there. I'm here asking for enforcement of this law that they lack no good thing. See what I'm saying? We speak the redemption. We speak the healing. We speak the life that was won, at, that Jesus won at Calvary. We could say that we're acting as that conduit we're, for his answer. We're asking, we're calling it down. We're releasing all those answers that are in the throne room. What's there? Glory. What's there? Power. Is there any sickness there? No. Is there any lack there? No. Is there any indecision there? No. Who's in charge? God is. See what I'm saying? We're bringing that. We're going into the courtroom and saying, this is what is real, and I want it released in this situation. Part of intercession is standing in between the situation and the, purpose, and the person to release the light, the glory of God, the light of God, the power of God, the lightning to create a meeting that will strike upon an individual or strike upon a situation or hit the mark in a situation or hit the mark in a person. We war when we tell the earth, when we tell demonic structures the word. We tell them the answer that we got in the throne room and we speak until it happens. Now, what does that mean? Well, I am there in the throne room and the, the scepter is released to me and says, yes, healing. I come to earth and I speak, yes, Father, I'm looking for your healing. I'm looking because when true, when answers and power is released, there will be change. There will be change. There will be change. Now, people have said, well, we broke that stronghold, but there's no change then we speak until it happens. We're not begging God because God has given us his word that says that it will be broken. If we tell it, it will be broken, but we keep speaking to it because the enemy, the structures, that second heaven would like to stop up that lightning, that light that needs to come down and make meeting with our person. And so we keep praying, we keep speaking, we keep agreeing, we keep thanking, we keep worshiping, we keep dancing, we keep doing what we need to do until it happens, until it happens. We thank you for the answer, for the fulfillment. In faith, we don't see it yet, but that's what faith is, right? Is believing something that we can't see. We worship, we shout, we dance, we wave our flags, we, we speak the word. No doubt. We know that it's going to hit its mark because we were there in the throne room and we asked the Father to release it and we continue until. See, we are ultimately the representers. We are ultimately, I think I missed a slide here. Nope, I guess I didn't. We're representers of who Jesus is. It's like we have a menu and we're waitresses and we're carrying around on our little, our little uh, tray. Oh, oh, you need healing. Oh, oh, okay. I'm giving you healing. Oh, 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 let me see. Yeah. Yeah. I have freedom here from drug addiction. Oh yeah. I, I have, I have motivation from complacency. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I have, see what I'm saying? We, from our, our tray, we, we have all these gifts that we can disperse on the earth and we speak until it happens. And this is what intercession is. It's releasing 
what we know that God has given to us in a situation. It's allowing the lightning of God to hit its mark and change occurs. Change occurs. That's when we know that we have broken through is when change occurs and we do not stop until change occurs. Well, I want to invite you today to begin to approach the throne room with the power of God, the light of God, the mindset that if we go before him and if we ask, that's what his word says, we have to have something that is our basis of truth and our basis of truth that he is the creator of all, the, the, the creator of the universes. There is no higher, no higher power than him. That because of Jesus, we have the right to boldly go in there. And because we're worshiping and praising and thanking him, we can get in there. And because our hands are clean and our heart is pure and the, the enemy doesn't have a hold in us, we can go in and boldly ask for these things. And the word says he will grant the things that we ask some places it says if we ask to according to his will other places it says ask whatever and i'll do it when we go in with the word the answer we know that we can have it released if we will only release it now you say well cynthia how come this hasn't happened well i think what happened is um and this is a, 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 an opinion of mine. I think what happened is, is we got baptized in the Holy Spirit and we never went out and released what we had. It's scary, but it's a, it's a, it's a step of faith. We see someone be healed in Jesus' name. We see someone lose her and let her go. God can't work in us if we don't step out and then he'll meet us where we do that in intercession and in acts of the gospel, right? When we become little Christ, when we go about doing his will, we go about interceding with our hands as well as our words. That's what intercession is. When we're the stand that can do it between God himself and here on earth, we allow that power, the light of God to be seen in us, but also to be released through us so that change occurs. I encourage you, I encourage you to get in the word, find the answer, and then go before the throne room and ask for it before the judge for it to be released and then thank him and don't quit. Speak in it, live in it, believe in it, war in it until it occurs. That is intercession. So today I want you to consider what is it in your life? What is it in your family's life? What situation in your group, in your family, in your work situation, do you need to release the lightning, the strike, the mark, the power of God? Find yourself a place where you can search out the scripture, where you can worship before, you, before him until you can get into the place that you know that the answer was given, yes, and then stand in it until it occurs. Stand in it until it occurs. God bless you.